Hey, this is Stefan from ProjectLifeMastery.com. I'm at the amazing summit. This is Garrett Gunderson, the best-selling author of Killing Sacred Cows. He's got a book that's coming out on Budgeting Sucks. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Just been talking about Budgeting Sucks with a group of people, so it yeah. uh, seems to resonate. <laughs> so I, I love that book title, Budgeting Sucks. Do you want to tell people why Budgeting Sucks and what's the solution to that? Yeah, number one is you don't shrink your way to wealth. And so budgeting elicits a scarcity mentality where it's all about what you can eliminate. And if you think about all the mental energy that it takes to cut something out. So you go through, comb through all your bills, you cut it out, you double coupon clip, you think about it all the time, you, you, you don't do things you enjoy, eventually life becomes pretty miserable and you use too much energy towards something that doesn't build lasting or sustainable wealth. If we sat down with people that have really made it and said, did you cut expenses out right. completely? No one shrinks their way to wealth, and when you get that, then you get it's about production, it's about value creation. That's awesome, I love that. So adding value, um, what are some of the best ways you find for people to be able to you know, change their finances? You know, What tips yeah. do you have for someone that might be struggling financially right now that wants to take their finances to a whole new level? So I'm sure you've heard to live within your means. It doesn't sound too exciting. Right. The first way you can do that is by budgeting. But the second way is by being efficient. So if you improve your, if you improve your credit score, you can negotiate better interest rates. You get better interest rates, then all of a sudden you have more cash flow. Or if you start paying attention, are you overpaying on taxes and really kind of spend some time there? Most people are. So if you can save tax, that's money to your bottom line. Or do you have hidden fees or commissions with investments? That's money that can be back in your pocket or insurance. So it's like just paying a little bit of attention to your finances and using that time that most people use budgeting to be more efficient, that's key. Or the third thing that you can do to live within your means is expand your means. Actually go out there and think, how can I deliver more value? How can I serve more people? How can I have a greater impact? What unique skills do I have that if I leverage properly will bring in more income? And instead of thinking about waiting for retirement and accumulating, think about building cash flow today and focus on improving and creating cash flow, whether that's from your investments, whether that's from starting a business, or even in today's world, there's a bunch of like ways to start a business without having any capital, right? We've seen companies pop up like Airbnb and Uber right. and all this kind of stuff. So there's ways to be, a, you know, even have a job and do something on the side, or we're sitting here yeah. right now at amazing.com, yeah. yeah. where people are selling stuff on Amazon with yeah. a really low investment. It's not like they have to raise a bunch of money to do that. So think about ways that you can increase your reach, impact, and dollars follow value. So I always ask, how can you create more value for people? I love that. One thing we were talking about before, you were mentioning the 18% model. Do you want to share yeah. what that is? So budgeting is about what you can cut out. I still believe that you have to have infrastructure. So what you do right. is you pay yourself first anytime you go to you know, pay. Like if you're yeah. getting paid by a company, a lot of times you can automatically have a certain percentage of every deposit set to a separate account. So you go set up a separate account checking, savings, money market. I don't really care what interest rate it gets, just that it's separate from your business or your personal checking because you don't want it commingled. There's something called Parkinson's Law, which says if you don't have an infrastructure and you have an increase in income, within three to six months your expenses will rise to meet or even exceed that income. So you take 18% of every dollar. Now, if it starts with 1% or 3%, you just start the habit of paying yourself first and then finding a way to make everything else work so that there's something for you first before it just gets gobbled up and eaten up. And 18% is because one, I want, uh, you know, I want one sixth of that to go to you to just blow and spend any way you want without right. guilt. So you reward yeah. yourself, right? That's yeah. different than budgeting. Yeah, yeah. And then the other 15% is so that you can have more money in the future, even after taxes and inflation, and you have to replace things that break down, or you have you know luxuries once enjoyed become necessities. Right, right. So you wanna so improve true. your life, and there's technological change. So there's things you're gonna buy in the future that you don't even know exist today. Right. So the easiest way to get to that 18% is by finding lost money, right. by improving cash flow, by not overpaying on financial fees. I mean, I think it's at least 10% or more that yeah. anyone's losing. And, and you said that you can always find stuff. anyone, no matter what your situation is, you can always find that hidden money, whether it's a credit card or their taxes, whatever it is. Absolutely. So you every, might, you every might be time. watching this thinking, well, you know, I, you know, I can't put aside that 15% or whatever, but there are ways you just have to be creative and actually find it, yep. right? And then, so um, one thing I wanna to ask too, you know, a lot of people might wonder, okay, I'm putting money aside, what should I do with that money? You know, you mentioned blowing it, spending, or the 3% spending that, but the 15%, you know, there's stocks, there's mutual funds, there's so many different options for people. What, what would you recommend for people to, you know, learn more about what to do? The first thing is you automate your savings but you get deliberate and intentional and strategic with your investing. 
So don't have your right. investments automatically deposit. Right, have your right. savings automatically deposit and when there's enough money, get really strategic on how you're gonna allocate that. For some people, they just should pay off loans because their loans are a higher interest rate cost than they're earning on their investments. As a matter of fact, you might even go cash out some investments and pay off loans because you'll save a guaranteed return when you pay off a higher interest rate than you're earning, right? So there's that. But the second piece is you learn your investor DNA. We all have our own kind of abilities. We have our own competencies and what drives us. We have our own values. We have our own focus. And instead of diversifying, which is usually like admission that you don't know what you're doing, I'll put some here and there and hopefully not everything loses at once, diversification is, a, is kind of diversification for right. some people. Instead, focus on just a few things that you really understand, that you really right. would pay attention to anyway. And if you don't know where to invest, invest in yourself and your education and the discovery of that investor DNA because keeping your principle is more important than missing out on an opportunity, right? Like some right, people right. like, oh, well, if I miss out on the opportunity and they invest right. and then they lose, losses are too, too you know, it's like yeah. Rowan Buffett, number one rule, don't lose money. Yeah, rule yeah. number two, refer back to rule right, number one. Right. So, you know, I, I always look at creating cash flow, creating efficiency, but build up your safety and stability. Because people that go bankrupt, people that right. get into financial trouble, people that get the high interest rate debt, it's because they didn't have enough liquidity and we're all in store for financial surprises in the future. We just don't know what they're gonna exactly. be or when they're gonna happen, but if you have enough safety, and look, there's, there's just not a lot of financial people that are gonna tell you to do that because no one gets paid a commission on that stuff, right, right? right? But have at least six months. I mean, if you had two years, even better, and then, you're more ready to invest once you have that handle. That's awesome. So I got one more question. Yeah. Um, I want to ask. I I'm fascinated about morning rituals. You know what people do that people that are successful. There's certain mm -hmm. things they do each morning just to allow them to be successful. So, what's your morning ritual? Um, I call it the three E's: exercise, education, and enlightenment. Awesome. But the order is actually I start with meditation. Okay. And I mean, I think back in 2004, I started meditating for like 15 seconds a day. Right. It was like so yeah, little yeah. of time. Right. I just. It's just the habit of it, right? Now I'm up to yeah. an hour wow, a lot of days. That's awesome. um, so I meditate, and then I'll either read or listen to something in my field of expertise or in productivity, or it might even be in you know any area when it really comes down to right, it, depending right. on what I'm what I'm reading or listening to. But I always have that stocked up and ready to go. And then I write in my five minute journal. So in the five minute journal, I do three things I'm grateful for, yeah. three things that would make it a great day, and a declaration, and that's kind of how I, how I really start the day. And then um, exercise then comes last for me. Right. Um, and awesome. I don't do it every day, I exercise more like four days a week and right. just have really intense workouts. Awesome, man, well thank you so much. Yeah. I think this can help a lot of people. How can people find out more about you and what, you, what you're up to? Um, well, I don't know if it's gonna be up just yet at budgetingsucks.com, so you okay. should go to wealthfactory.com. Okay. wealthfactory.com and we have some killer guides on there like uh, how to produce more cash flow for entrepreneurs, how to uh, do right, you know, kind of like make sure the investment's right for you and the right fit. We have an investor scorecard on there. Um, and I think we have one other kind of cool bonus that are all just kind of free giveaways and you can really start to get entrenched in an idea of the opposite of budgeting called cash flow banking or the opposite of scrimping called value-based spending, which I think gives a lot more freedom and allow people to really grow. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'll throw some thank of those you. links below this video. All right. Thanks, man. Appreciate thank it. Thank you.